Uh, does he know we're here? Hi everyone, um, it's good to see so many people. Um, hi Ephraim. Uh, turnout, good turnout. Uh, Almost as good as the real Bathy Ram. <laughs> uh, Ephraim, Aaron's there, Yaakov's there, Yehuda. And I've got Avi here. You want to just message yourself? To tell me if you hey Aaron and Yago are drafting. Hey, my boys in Michaelum. Okay, I'm going to move <laughs> away. So I'm keeping it <laughs> guys, I'm eating some chips for you guys. Um, I'm eating some chips. We have a uh, what's called? We have some fused tea, guys. So just imagine that you're drinking fused tea. Um, sitting I'll read some tea. Our, our house. Um, Shmuel is Shmuel Yaku's father or Aaron's father? Yaku's my dad. father and his mother are here as well. Oh, so traditionally, we would have actually done real masiba, um, which. But guys is uh, unfortunately uh, um, having a lachaim by um, in the machine. It's not having a lachaim. Unfortunately, we haven't had the uh, ability to do that. So we're, we're going to be doing it in a more modest way, uh, slightly more normal way. And it's an amazing way to also celebrate your matzmut. So uh, no. um, to rename myself so people don't think uh, Avram Nismach has had a. Face, facelift or I've okay all right so that's me in okay wonderful we're gonna wait a few minutes for everyone else to join um everyone those who are going to join. Um, it's, nice, it's nice to have Yaakov's parents with us sorry for the a very late very late warning uh, regarding that we were doing this, um, but it's good to uh, see many people with us right now. Um, Nathan just joined as well, and someone else has joined, Ovadia, who's here anyway. But okay, um, so I wanted to share a few quick ideas and basically just have a quick hang a hangout. If anyone wants to say anything, wish a, uh, a, a, a good luck to whoever is joining the army. Um, that is luck, boy. welcome. Um, um, I'm sorry, Yaakov, that you're not here. If, if so, I'd give you a sticker, as uh, you're famous for demanding. Um, but unfortunately, you're not. And Aaron, I wouldn't give you a sticker because you don't make that joke the whole time. Nothing personal. Um, so I want to say one quick thing. Um, the Vilna Gaon says that the days of Sviat Omer are days which are bad for the Yitzhara. The Yitzhara has control. He says, however, there are two days of the Sphere to Omer. He says this explicitly. The two days of Sphere to Omer, which the Yetzirah has no control, is the 20th of the Omer, which is Yom Ha'atzmaut, and the other day ends up being Yom Yushalayim. Okay? So, even though sometimes the way some Jews celebrate Yom Ha'atzmaut may be removed from Kedusha, and it may just be having a good barbecue. Um, if you were here right now, you'd see that I and the other Rebbeim are wearing a white shirt and we're dressed up as if it's Shabbat. Because for us, and for all of us, I'm sure we all agree, we just maybe haven't got into the into um, realizing and, and doing it actively. We realize it's a Yom Chag. It's not like, just like Yom Zikron here isn't like Memorial Day in America, which I understand many people use as an excuse just to do another barbecue. Which I was in shock when I was in Chicago. Well, it's sales. It's a sales day. Pardon? It's a sales, it's a sales day, day in America. Yeah, it's, it, that I find bizarre. Baruch Hashem in Israel, Halavai, we didn't have to have a Yom Hazikaron, but if we do already, it's used as a way of introspection, even for, for everyone, not just for the religious, for so many, so many people. It's used as a day of um, introspection. And then from that, you go into Yom Atzimut, and eventually we're going to have Yom Yushalayim as well, which is Malin because we're going up and up and up, and getting closer and closer and closer to what we need to do, which is Binyan Beit HaMikdash. So that's what we're working for. And these two days, Yom, Yom Atzimut and Yom Yushalayim, please God, by Yom Yushalayim, uh, we may be back in the Mechina, and we can celebrate it properly. Um, I'll say in brackets, unofficially, um, it may be possible to come back by uh, Sunday for everyone. Um, um, obviously, only according to the rules. We're not breaking any rules. If the rules are changed, 
it's very likely that all the yeshivot and mechinot will be reopened by Sunday, on condition that the mechinot and the yeshivot are keeping the rules. Um, so the question is, if they're going to keep the rules or not, we are going to make an effort. As you see, I'm, uh, well, you can't see, but I'm four meters away from both guys here. And uh, yeah, so I want to share a quick idea with you and then everyone can uh, give brachas to Yaakov and Aaron on the Gius and uh, you can hang, hang out as well. Um, this is being recorded, so just, you know, behave yourselves. Um, so I'll say this outside. Rav Cook says, so, so we'll start with Herzl. Herzl says the state is used for just a place for the Jews to flee to. We need a place for the Jews to be able to flee, to run away to. It's a secular answer to a physical problem. Um, Rav Cook says more than that. It's a lot more than that. It's Yisod Kisei Hashem Bo'olam. It's the, the foundation of the throne of God. So Aaron and Yaakov, and please God, all of you who will be going to the army in the right time, Bezer Hashem. The Ito Vizmano, whenever it should be, you should go. You become like the um, the throne men, the people who are guarding the throne of God. Um, and yes, it's dangerous, but so too is guarding a throne of a Kodesh Baruch Hu. So we believe, and without being Mazalzel, we believe, Mamash, that we are becoming Sivas Hashem, just like in Chabad. I don't know if anyone ever did Sivas Hashem. I, would, I used to do it. So Sivas Hashem is a kids' magazine where you get mitzvah points for doing mitzvahs. And you always had this Chaya Mushka who's like five years old, and somehow she's already a three-star general because her parents have sent in all the mitzvahs she's done from the day she was born. So I only got to, I think, a major. My sisters um, got to higher rank than me. Uh, they were a one-star general or something. But now putting that aside, you guys become part of the real Sivas Hashem by being a basis to the Kisi of Hashem, the basis of the throne of God. And that's what the Medina is. We're waiting for a complete re revelation. And that's what we're celebrating today. The beginning of the building of this throne of God. And Rav Cook said this before the state was yet ever created. He passed away before the state. But we're working to get it there. We're working there to get it to a place where it can bring the redemption and fulfill the redemption. And that's what we're still waiting for. Um, and so Aaron and Yaakov have the chance of fulfilling the uh, ability to be foot soldiers first um to go first to protect the kisa hashem of hashem and please god please god we'll have shalom and no one will need to go in and uh we'll just be like the un peacekeepers um who do nothing um so please god we'll have an army like that as well we won't need people like this but until that is the situation we are the soldiers that we have are Meginim Akise Yesok Kise Hashem Bolam of um defending the um the, the throne of a Kurdish Baruch. So that's what we should think about. Tomorrow, please God, you'll be able to go to outdoor minyanim and say hello with a bracha. Um and if you're not, you don't need a minion for a uh, to say hello. Uh or to say, okay, so please God take the opportunity, take some time to um to to uh say a bracha. Not everyone agrees you have to say a bracha. Um it's definitely a day which you shouldn't be saying Tachanun on, because we need to rejoice. Um, everyone in the religious science world says you should be saying Halal. Whether you say Brach or not isn't the whether whether you say Brach or not isn't a measure of how Zionist you are. It's a, a halachic thing. Um, so please, God, say Halal tomorrow. Rejoice, because realize this isn't uh, another first of July. This isn't just another state which can defend you, just like America has done in the past, and please God will continue to do. Um, it is a, a holy day, which the um, Vilna Gon already says is a day where the Yetzirah is less powerful. And also, more than that, the, uh, the um, what's he called? The Sfas Emes, the um, first Rebbe of Gur, says that we are waiting for a third Durban and Chag, a third Chag that we don't have which is going to be just like we have Pesach and Purim. And we have Hanukkah and Sukkot. We're waiting for something to be like Shavuot. And that we need, we're waiting for Durban and Chag. Sorry, no. Shavuot and Purim are the same. We're still waiting. for Purim is when they accept the Torah again, just like in Shavuot. We're waiting for another Pesach. And that is Yom Um So um, that's what we're waiting for. And that's what we've seen. Baruch Hashem, through the Nisim and Niflot of God taking us out from 
the gates of hell and three years later bring us to the land of Israel and enabling people like us to have a homeland that we can return to and feel safe in. Um, that's my vort, short vort, not a long uh, idea. Um, however, before we, uh, I want to call it a day, I'd like to give everyone an opportunity if they want uh, to take themselves off mute, give Aaron and uh, Yaakov a bracha. And if they don't give a bracha, I'm more than happy to just uh, hear you guys um, hang out and whatever. Um, okay, so if anyone wants to, no, no, it is a bit awkward. Yeah, okay, okay. So Ava, uh, not Avad. Avi is here, uh, not on his phone, but on my computer. So Avi's going, I'm going to just turn the screen around. Yaakov and Aaron wish you a good time. Hope you all have uh, enjoy it. Let us know how it is. Give us all the tips we need. And uh, good luck, boys. And good night. Hey, guys. Uh, Amen. Hope you draft Thank you. well. Hope you. Uh, get what you're looking for and yeah enjoy okay all right does anyone else have anything to say um if um no, but, yeah. of course, it, it, well, of course. i mean yakov uh yakov's parents Shmuel, uh, uh if you want to say anything i'm sure you're going to speak to him on the phone beforehand so no pressure um i'm sure you're going to give him bracha on the day as well um if you want to show okay so we we just wanted to thank you yeah, we want, we want to thank the Mechina in general for everything that they've done for Yaakov throughout the year. And Hashem should protect Yaakov and protect all the, all the boys of the Mechina that go to the army in general. And Hashem should be with all of them. That's right, Hashem. Amen. Amen. Anyone else want to say anything? Yeah, I want to say something. Let's go, Fry. When Aaron, you're going to the <laughs> army, you're going to be Chayalim. The Jewish state. I want you to be safe. I want you to kill as many terrorists as you can. I want you to save as many lives as you can. Fine, let's, let's God, stay with the, God, the Let's stay with the just let's stay with just, you know, being safe. <laughs> and uh bin for Oivecha We're not happy when we kill. We're happy when we save Jews. So let's stay with that. But by killing terrorists, we're saving Jews, right? Really. Yeah, yeah, fair, but we don't <laughs> So it's indirect. We rejoice in indirect. We don't rejoice in. Um, I've had to take the bottle. I'm not taking. It. I never told them to rejoice when they kill the terrorist. When they kill the terrorist, <laughs> they save Jewish life, and by that they should rejoice. Amen. Amen. Okay, this has been recorded. Amen. I hope I won't get sued by some like left wing. Uh, <laughs> I didn't say Kanachai. Okay. So anyone else? Um, uh, uh, Danny, you took yourself off. Yo. Uh... Aaron and Yaakov, it's uh, not too late to sign up for Shana Bet, if you guys want to do it. And, uh, <laughs> obviously, uh, what can I say? I haven't made that already, but uh, I'm glad I met you guys. And uh, you know, spending it, all the moments we had together was very uh, uplifting for me. Uh, yo, this is not the end, you know? Can't wait to see you guys again, and yeah, good luck. Amen, look at all the Nathan, you want to say something? Uh, yes, yeah, sure. I mean, everything's pretty much been said, but uh, like, well done, guys, taking uh, being the first ones to go in. Very brave. Um, don't die, please. <laughs> Thank you, Nathan. <laughs> All right, I've been Nathan. I've been accused of being l lacking tact before, but that 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 knocks it out of the park. Nathan, look. My parents are on this call. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. All right. Um, you, I'm just sure you'll survive. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yaakov and uh, Aaron, wish you all the best luck and uh, have fun. Yoda. Yoda, did you hear what happened to your, the cats, the kittens? Did you understand what happened? Yeah, unfortunately. Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'm just kidding. You might as well just throw away my suitcase. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, I did think that um, Rav Aviad might be joining. I'm going to wait one second. He said he joined, but um, he hasn't seen my me message yet. So um, if anyone has anything else to say, if you guys also want to... Oh, wow. Look at Danny. Getting jacked. Wow, he's getting in the game. Let's go. <laughs> Danny. 
All right, very good, guys. Um, unfortunately, even though the Machina is um, kind of half active, the guys haven't had a chance to finish the Pergola, the, um, the thing I'm sitting in. It still hasn't been finished. The guys are waking up at 5.30 in the morning to go and work on the vineyard. They're working uh, on the vineyard. Uh, well, you saw the video from Yosef with the French accent, didn't you? Yeah. The uh, French, the wine I'm very hard at work. Um, they, they're exhausted. That's why Yosef isn't here. He went to sleep. Um, all right, guys. I think I'm going to love you and leave you. Um, would you like me to make someone a host so you guys can continue the call? Uh, make me a host. Make me a host. Okay, fine. I'm going to make a family host. Give him the power. Um, and I'm going to love you and leave you. Um, guys, appreciate it, um, Yaakov and Aaron, I'll give you the blessing I once got from. I'm going to make you a host in a second frame, so you can't mute, mute me as I'm trying to give my bracha. Uh, I'll give you a, a, a bracha that I got from one of my rabbis to be a Shoshana ben Ochochim, to be a rose among the thorns that you'll be able to, you know, no matter what's going on around you, inspire others for greatness, whether that be spiritual greatness or physical greatness to really set an example in all these things. Um, even though it's difficult and there are thorns around you, not everyone is the top of the top, spiritually or physically, you guys are going to be set, setting the standards to be the rose among the thorns and really raise up the machaka uh, or pluga, whichever, whichever way you're going to serve. Um, and you're going to be able to raise up everyone else. Okay? So, Bezor um, Hashem, I'm now going to make Ephraim a host. The recording is going to end when I leave. Um, if Rav, Thanks, Rav. If Rav Avia joins in, <laughs> just start behaving. Um, it's been great to see everyone. And uh, please, God, if anyone has any questions about our return um, on Sunday, which is unofficial right now. So you could be, like, happy with it? No. Don't record. Right Don't now. record. Why are you recording this? Beautiful view. I'm joining it. With, you'll see. I'll tell you after. Okay. Oh, Rob, you're back. Um, Danny, why are you? Why do you look totally and completely asleep? Oh, it's Danny. Okay, you was. So. Danny, come back. Wake up and come back. Yeah. So, guys, how are you doing? Baruch Hashem, all is good. Good, Baruch Hashem. Did you see the, no, the um, uh, Ephraim's uh, session that he talked about, uh, about Chayalim Bodidim? And the Tekis, uh, the guy made a Tekis. Are you familiar with it? Great. It was great. I was there. Brilliant. Oh, I thought you were in the whole time. It was really good. You guys should have seen it. Should have been there. It was great. It was totally great. Chavkoa was really, it was really, it was really strong. Um, Avi also spoke very nicely, but he's not here right now. Look, I have to say, uh, first of all, it's like really strange all the situation. I mean, there are guys. As you know, there are guys that are right now in the mechina, but you know, we come, they come up, they come in the mechina, and you know, the first thing that you want to do is like give them, give them a hug, right? And that's the first thing, and then you, oh no. You can't even like get close to it. It's like so strange this whole situation, and uh, you know, even uh, talking via Zoom uh, is uh, really strange. Although we are very happy that we can talk to uh, Nathan, even though he's uh, there in London. But uh, and Judah so, also. Judah, yes, true. Um, yeah, I think that. Uh, getting into the army uh, in days like this, okay, it's just one day after your match mode, so it's like incredible. Um, but I think it's something that uh, is very uh, um, uh, have to take us to a very deep way. I, I'll explain what I mean. That when we go into the army, our First, I mean, you know, we saw movies and, you know, our vision of what's an army 
it's from the American army, the German army, the whatever army, and then we come up, we come into our army and our vision of how it's supposed to work. We have their vision, and therefore we come up in a, some sort of a whole a point of view. I mean, for us, the only fact, the reason why to go into the army. Uh, just because we have to, we very rarely have to, and if not because we have to, so there are other reasons because we want to defend our country, etc. But there's something that we sometimes forget. Your matzmot isn't just uh, a day of celebration; it's a hug. There's a kedusha in it. Uh, we, in theory, we could have, we could have said, uh, there isn't any mitzvah right now, so, but, but I mean, you know, some deed you could uh, say a bracha on, but it it is like that. There's a um, paragraph of Rav Tzviuda that he talks about the letokef kedushat yom atzmautenu, meaning there is a kedusha in yom atzmaut as there there's kedusha in any other Chag or in a Purim or in Hanukkah especially, I mean, it's, that's, that's a thing. That's a, uh, the way that we need to, I uh, know, that's the reason why I'm, I have a white shirt right now. I mean, for, for us, it's totally and completely Kadosh, really. It isn't, it's a, it's a Chag. It isn't a secular day. Um, uh, there's, a, there's a Midrash that uh, David HaMelech uh, wrote on his uh, Sword, Shem Hashem. His Shem Hashem was on his sword, or on his M16. Okay. Now this is something that I, I think that is very important for us coming into the army uh, to understand that we are talking about something else. Saal isn't the same army. Saal is something totally and completely different. Uh, one of my friends, an English speaker of friends, that was a Magad, Paket Gdud. Uh, came once with his all of his staff, all of his, his officers, uh, took them to uh, to the hotel, and then in the hotel, uh, a bunch of, uh, of tourists start to talk to them. You know, I have four officers and more weapons and blah blah. Um, and then they understood that he's in he talks English, so they started talking to him. And on some point, he took out a uh, okay, the, the, the piece of paper, Ruachtal. And the tourists were shocked. Why they were shocked? Because he said, uh, uh, we, uh, we didn't even think about something like that. I mean, for us, Israeli soldiers are killers, are, are, are tough guys, are cruel. Are, I mean, you know, if you, you succeeded doing so many things, so many complicated things that probably are very tough, right? Um, and you, as an army, in one of the first days in every Tironut, uh, you have a session just talking about Wachtal, and it's so important that every soldier in Israel have, uh, have this paper in, just that he had to remember what is the Israeli, what are Israeli values, yeah, it's like for them it was quite a big surprise. But we and Jews, for us it's 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 obvious, right? It's obvious because because we aren't fighting because you know we want to beat them up. We want to uh, I don't know. We want to be uh, cool. No, we want to defend ourselves. We want to have our uh, our stake with us. We have to. We want to protect our family. So that's why we are here. And we aren't uh, fighting against and hating and whatever else. Now that, for the, because of that, we are uh, we are very gentle. We are very complicated from one side. When we need to fight, we fight, and we give a strong fight, and we are succeeding in it. But when we do not need to fight, we are nice people. And not only just that these two sides are true about us, but rather the goal. The goal is a, a mitzvah. When we get into the army, we are doing a mitzvah. Meaning that whenever you, when you are a soldier, you are a better person. You are more kadosh.
you have three mitzvot in the fact that you're going into the into the army. One mitzvah is taking care for Am Yisrael, the other one is the Eretz Yisrael, and the third one is Kiddush Hashem. And these three mitzvot are mean mean that every minute that you are there, you are doing a huge mitzvah, a very unique mitzvah. My grandfather would have really want to replace me as a soldier. He was a soldier in the British Army in the Second World War. And it's a very unique mitzvah, but this mitzvah is a mitzvah. It isn't just something that you know we we do because I don't know what because the state decided no we do it because it's a huge mitzvah meaning this is something totally and completely kadosh not more, not less than that I mean when you come to mechinak dam tzvayit religious mechinak dam tzvayit and the bet midrash and that filot and you know it's very obvious that you are talking about something kadosh but the truth is that when you get into the bakum and you start to be a soldier and every minute that you are there you are part of a huge 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 mitzvah and and when a person really goes through this mitzvah in a in a healthy way in a good way uh, in the end of it he's a much more a good person a gentle person a person that could uh, take a chayut about all sorts of stuff uh, he's he's a better person Especially if he if he will be an officer, but even if he won't, uh, he's a much better person than what he was before he came into the army. So this is a this is a, a gius party, the misibad gius. The truth is, it isn't supposed to be a misibad gius. It, it isn't a party. It isn't a party in the in the fact of you know we are having fun. Uh, it isn't the really the the, the the that isn't the truth. The truth is that. Before you get into the army, you need to litbol. You need to go to a mikveh. It it isn't just a, a chumah that I invented. It's written in the Torah and Parashat Kitetze. It's written that in the entrance to every base camp, you are supposed in the entrance to every base, you are supposed to have a mikveh and come uh, come into the basis after you are pure, after you are really tahor, really tahor, and you are. Before you are going into the into the into Beit Hamikdash, and this is something that for us is uh, wow, uh, it's surprising. But the truth is, it isn't surprising at all because the army is real, really something kadosh. And if I I, I think that if there's something that uh, is like in the essence of the uh, of the whole uh, period of time in the Mechina, this is precisely it. I mean, this is like the thing. That the, the, if we not only could understand it, not only could say it, but rather feel it, and you know, every minute that you are there, to understand that it isn't just a big school that you are there, but rather it's a, it's a, it's a, you are doing a huge mitzvah. This is an unbelievable mitzvah. Uh, so you know, be happy. Be happy with the fact that you are suffering right now, or you will suffer, or you did suffer, whatever. Uh, be happy because you are doing a mitzvah that, that our forefathers would would have paid lots of money uh, for in the, in the last uh, two thousand years to have to do the same mitzvah. Um, I don't know if I could tell you one thing that when you in your when you look uh, uh, in a retro perspective when you see when you think think about things. Uh, after they happen, it's, uh, it isn't so awful as you feel, as you think it is when you are suffering uh, and when you are going through it. Um, I have to say, I'm really happy with uh, this group, with uh, you guys. I'm happy to have a, I'm happy for the fact that uh, they are right now. Two of us are going to the army. I hope that you'll uh, succeed and we'll do. Everything in a very high, in a very uh, good way, uh, and of course we are here for you. We are here for helping you and being your home here in Israel. And uh, not only, of course, we are a bit midrash, but not only, not only a, sh- a shiu or uh, uh, or answering a halachic question, but rather a, a family, another family, another house in Israel. So we are here for you. 
Um, no. If we were, if if we were, you know, if all of us were here in Israel, so uh, and we could have uh, beat each other, so uh, <coughs> would have looked. Uh, it was. It wasn't. It wasn't like that. And you know, a hug, a kiss, and that's that's supposed to be. But uh, so. Now we don't have to be so quiet. Thanks, Rob. Appreciate it. Rob, you're on. Rob Center, you're on mute. You're on mute. Uh, I'll, I'll unmute him. Rob, uh, Ari, I just unmuted you, so you're, uh, you're welcome to start speaking. You're mute before. Okay. So introduce me. Who am I, who am I on with? Um, Yaakov, um, so I'm one of the rabbis in the Machina. We have Shari Shizgal, who's the one, uh, not one of the, the only Imbayit <laughs> of the uh, Machina. And we have um, Yaakov and Yaakov's friend Aaron, who's about to go to the drafting on the same day. And a few of the other Talmudim, um, who are also uh, going to be drafting, but not, not in two days, later on in the year. So can you explain, explain to me Machina? What is Machina? Oh, well, maybe you should ask Yaakov, your Talmud. He can describe I, I just teach there. I don't experience it from the other end. So really, it's up to... So, so Yaakov, explain to me what Mechina is. Sure, Rob. So uh, Mechina, for me, what really what it was, I guess it was just a, uh, just a place for me to prepare myself um, as best I could um, for the upcoming drafts coming up this Thursday. Um, and it was really a place, you know, to find, find myself, find where I was. Uh, find a little structure, you know, before going into the army. Um, the army's not always the easiest place, um, religiously and and uh, and everything like that. So, you know, you have to you have to have some good structure going in, um, so that you can maintain like that throughout. So that that's what machina was for me. It was a sense of preparation. Machina literally means preparation. So, it was. Uh, it's a preparation for uh, for what's to come. So okay, so let me explain to you something. Uh, uh, what is the, what's the rabbi's name from the what's to go from the from Mechina? Rabbi Liss. Rabbi Liss. Rabbi Liss. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Rabbi Liss, able to hear me? I'm here. I'm here. So Rabbi Liss, I want to tell you something. So I want to tell you, and it's something that you can fit. I, I say over in the shul. And it says that if your Rebbe is done with Tamalach Hashem, then you should learn from it. Now, do I, I don't look like a Malach, do I? Uh, you may be, you've got the nice beard, but what does it mean? How many people really, really, really experienced, able to meet a Malach? And you tell them, if he's not a Malach, I don't want to have anything to do with the Rebbe. What, what, what's the, what, what does Chazal mean when they say, if your Rebbe is done with Tamalach Hashem? So I explained, a Malach is only one tafkid. He has one job. So if you look at your Rebbe and you say, my Rebbe has one objective here. He wants what's best for me to grow, then learn from him. If you look at your Rebbe, you think your Rebbe has five different ideas, five different objectives. He's got, he's no gay this way, he's no gay that way, he's got this nigga, he's not that nigga. You'll never learn from him because you don't trust him that he's all he has. So if you can look at your Rebbe and say, he has one, he's a malach, he has one avoid. He's to, make, to help me to be a better person, then learn from him. The embassy is a lone soldier like, like Yaakov, somebody who goes off to Eretz Yisrael. You know what? It's a person is doing something selflessly in order to be shamer, to be able to protect Klai Yisrael, to be able to, to be a part of their, you know, it's, we all, you know, I'm a rav, I'm a this or that. We all, the, the Nagiyas, and there might be things why we might do it. But Yaakov, to be able to step up and say, you know what? There's no personal gain. 
This is, I want to go to Eretz Yisro. I want to be part of the Tzahal. I want to be part of the people that protect Am Yisro and Kedush Yisro. That's an amazing thing. It's an amazingly selfless thing. And, you know, this morning, this morning, and uh, 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 Shmuley, you listening to me? I was embarrassed. I watched a video this morning of Rav Grossman by Har Herzl. The video of Rav Grossman by Har Herzl, Har Zikarim. I said, I never went there. I never went there. And you know what? The reality, I remember a statement from Rav, from, from Rav, um, Rav Gussman. Rav Gussman wrote that every single person buried there is a Kaddish Vitar. He said, every single person there is a Kaddish. He says, the problem is we only remember it when they pay us. We don't appreciate them, the mysterious Nefesh, when they're walking down the street. And, then, and, was, and they might look a little bit different than us. And they might dress a different, a different than us. He says, sometimes we only remember that they're, they're Kaddishim. And we only appreciate them when they're in our soul. The reality is each and every person that you're going to interact as you go into during it, yes, you need your structure, you need, you need to, your religious structure, you also have to recognize you're all together on one mission. Your mission is to protect Eretz Yisrael, Am Yisrael, Kedush Yisrael, it's end. Uh, you know what? On some level, I envy you. I envy you that you know, it's, you're, you're waking up every day and you're gonna do something that's important. And every day you're gonna wake up and contribute to, so Yaakov, you should be protected, and I think you have it all backwards. You know, there's a picture in Rabbi, Rabbi Ditsky was visiting Hebron, and the person came over to Rabbi Ditsky and said, give me a bracha. Rabbi Ditsky turned around and said to him, you give me a bracha, because you know what you're doing is Hashem Shabbat. So, I know what, I'll give you a bracha because I love you and Shmuley would want. My bracha is, I let him in the Shem, and Shmuley, if he marries an Israeli girl, we're going to Eretz Yisrael, correct? Is that a promise? Of course. And Yaakov, Yaakov, you're going to call me for the, this. This over oh, Zoom doesn't do me any good. For the swearing ceremony, we're going to go together, Shmuley? Yep. Yaakov, so I want a chalik. I'll learn. I'll do some learning on your behalf. I want a chalik of the schusim that you have for what you're doing. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Rav, Ravari, Ravari, because you, you, you went mute again. I'm mute. Ravari, good. Yeah. Um, this is a famous story. I assume you know it. Uh, it has lots of different gears, but um, Rav um, Shlomo Zemoyebach was asked by one of his Talmudim, "You can take these days off, days off yeshiva to go up north to the Kvarim, Kivri Sadikim." And so Kol Torah is just very close to Har Herzl. He says, why, why waste your time? It's a bit of Torah, just go across the road, go to Har Herzl and dominate the Kvarim of the Kedoshim. They're the true, they're, they're, they're also Kivri Tzadikim. You don't need to go all the way to Tiberia. It's a fantastic um, story. Um, fantastic. There's lots of different gooses, um, which probably means it's true. There's lots of different gooses, it probably means it's true. Um, but it's an incredible, incredible, uh, Incredible story, and also uh, Yaakov. No, people normally say um, Eretz Israel and Mikvah and Sukkah are the only three mitzvahs. And Aaron, sorry, we shouldn't forget Aaron over there. Aaron, hi. The three mitzvot which you do with your whole body: Eretz Israel, Sukkah, and Mikvah. And there's a fourth Baruch Hashem. The fourth is every day you wake up in the army. You wake up. <laughs> You don't need to take your dime, say modani, whichever way around you do it. You're doing a mitzvah by just breathing in the army. You're doing a mitzvah because they need, they need a sadak, a siddur kochot. They need 2,000 chayadim in the Negev. They need 3,000 chayadim in the Golan. And even if you're making coffee on a base in wherever, that's your job. Even there, you are counted as part of the army and they need you. So even then, Aaron and Yaakov, you're doing a mitzvah. It's incredible. So, uh, I didn't, I didn't plan on adding any extra words. I, I'd finish, but uh, Ravari over here inspired me to say a few other things. So uh, thank okay. you for sharing some uh, extra stuff. Wait, now, can I see? Oh, wait, so who's the other person? Um, I'm not sure. Aaron. Aaron, Aaron. can I say hello? Yeah, Aaron, Aaron. Hello. 
Where's Aaron? Um, he, uh, Aaron Bloomberg. Uh, and Aaron Bloomberg is an American or no? He's also. Yeah. He's in his family. He's, he's, he's an ex-American. Yeah. Aaron, where are you from? Um, Elizabeth, New Jersey. Oh, my wife grew up in Elizabeth. What's your last name? Bloomberg. Bloomberg. Okay. My wife grew up. My last name is Schwab. My wife grew up. You went, you went to JEC? You went to... Where did you go to school? Uh, I, I was in JEC for a little bit. For a little bit. Okay. <laughs> Don't worry about it. We, we've all had... You know what? Our past is where we're coming from, not where we have to go to. We are the only ones who determine where we're going. Our past is where we're coming from. And you know what? You're heading to a good place. You're heading to a good place, like Yaakov said, a disciplined place, and you'll make, you'll make everybody proud. You'll make everybody proud. Thank you. So I'd like to see you. Yeah, are you guys going to be your roommate? No, you just got together. You're going to be roommates where you're going? Uh, we'll figure it uh, out once we're there. <laughs> we're not sure. Now, but, no, now Yaakov. Are they using, do you have any idea whether or not they're going to use your gift of your hand? Do you have an idea which, which, which division you're going no to get? No, no clue. clue. Okay, because you have a talent, Yaakov. You have, you have many talents, but you should use... Yaakov, you, Yaakov, you can be a paramedic, no? That's changed. We'll see where, and we'll see where it works out. We'll see where, where everything Ravai, falls into He's joining now, he's joining now, because he was told by Ezra Hashem, uh, in August, he's going to be able to be, uh, Yaakov, you should be proud of yourself. Um, uh, he's going to be going to the paramedic course, Bezor Hashem, if it works out. That's fantastic. Yaakov, come we'll on. See, yeah, we'll see where it goes. What, no, no, that's not where it goes. Yaakov, reach for the stars. <laughs> the bottom line is, Yaakov, reach for the stars. You know what? Bottom line is, you're a man. You know what? What, what the silly thing of pulling my daughter out in the middle of the snow. The bottom line is, is if there's anybody that a person trusts in terms of being able to get it done under pressure, you've got the personality. Go for it. You've got the yeah. personality, you've got the temperament. Just, you know what, Yaakov, this is your turn to shine. This is the time to make, you know, it's, you, you've got specific talents and use them. Thank you, Ralph. Thank you, Ralph. Right. And, but, Yaakov, either way, I'll be proud of you. And I think your father would prefer the, what's it called, the paramedic as opposed to like jumping out of some plane or something like that. <laughs> but either way, I'll be very, very proud of you. And I look forward to the swearing ceremony. Thanks, Ralph. So is there, Shmuley, is there more to the program where I have to stop talking? Uh, no, I think, I think that's it. I think that's it. It started okay. earlier, but. I do uh, apologize. I was just, I was running around with work.